We're continuing our studies in Chapter 12 on Metabolism and Bioenergetics, and in this lesson we'll be looking at protein degradation. Remember, we don't utilize our so-called stored amino acids, part of normal cellular protein, except during a fast, under conditions of starvation. What we find is that processing amino acids requires more effort than simple carbohydrates, and that's why we don't use them as a first resource. Of course, if we take them into our diet, we can certainly process them. We find, however, that even in the absence of taking protein into our diet, if it's been a while since we've eaten, we're not going to process amino acids, we still need to degrade proteins and that's because sometimes proteins outlive their function and so why would you take extra space in the cell with a protein that's not being used instead we're going to degrade it and then we can recycle those amino acids and use it to build another protein that we do need so this is a part of normal cellular function there are actually two mechanisms for protein degradation. The first that we'll look at is the lysosome. This is, an actu is actually an organelle within the cell. Here we have an illustration of a cell that's in the blue, and here's our lysosome, this yellow structure here. So it's a separate organelle. It's bounded by a lipid bilayer. It contains proteases and other hydrolytic enzymes, and it tends to have a very low pH. Proteins that are going to be digested by the lysosome are first enclosed in a membranous vesicle, so a lipid bilayer, and that fuses with the lysosome. So here's another case where membrane fusion is important and we have to make sure our address system is working properly or we'll fuse the wrong membranes together. So there are multiple ways that we might encase a particle in a vesicle and that's illustrated here as well. We might have a, a damaged organelle that we need to degrade and replace and that's called autophagy. We're going to encase the organelle in a vesicle and that will fuse with the lysosome. We might also take up a cell or particle by phagocytosis and then that will be encased in a vesicle and again fused with the lysosome for degradation. Or we might take one up by endo receptor mediated endocytosis again it's encased in a vesicle that's fused with the lysosome and it gets degraded the benefit here is that the waste products are in the lysosome vesicle they're not released into the cytoplasm where they might damage the cell and then the lysosome can release its contents to the outside of the cell the second type of mechanism involves a proteasome it's a barrel shaped multi protein complex so it's an actual protease and that's pictured at the bottom left here so you can see that barrel structure it's in the cytoplasm it's not a separate organelle it's just a protein complex and you can see the protease sites here highlighted in pink the protein to be degraded is first tagged with a molecule called ubiquitin it's attached to lysine side chains of the protein and that tags it for delivery to the proteasome. And that's illustrated here. Here at the top of our figure we have the barrel shaped proteasome. Here's our protein to be degraded. It uh, has its normal fold. We've attached multiple ubiquitin molecules to a lysine residue. We need four or more to tag it for degradation. That's just kind of a double check to make sure we've targeted the right protein. That becomes a tag to deliver it to the proteasome where it can be degraded. First of all, however, in order for the proteasome to digest those peptide bonds, it needs to unfold the protein, and that's going to take energy. Remember, proteins fold spontaneously, which means if we want to unfold it, that would be non-spontaneous and require energy. And so we're going to use ATP hydrolysis to give us the energy we need to unfold the protein. As it's unfolded by the proteasome, it, those peptide bonds are clipped, we're going to break it up into small peptides that can then, then diffuse away. We have normal cytosolic peptidases that can then, di then digest the peptide into single amino acids. Proteases digest protein, peptidases digest small peptides. In our next video lesson, we're going to start to look at metabolic pathways and we want to find out why are there so many steps, is there some benefit there, and are there any common intermediates.